In a courtroom, language is everything. Lawyers make arguments, judges deliver rulings, but what happens when those words were put together by a computer? Lawyers are using artificial intelligence, so what's at stake? Some say the very integrity of the justice system. Here's the answer that it gave me in probably took one second. Jonathan Saumier works with the Nova Scotia Barristers Society, the group that regulates the industry. As he types a question into ChatGPT, it spits out an answer within seconds. It's an AI tool he and other lawyers are using to do things like manage their calendars, help them create contracts, and do legal research. What normally takes lawyers hours or even days, the AI can do in seconds. But accuracy is a chief concern. Saumier always checks the AI's work, a crucial step for any lawyer using AI. That's wrong. That used, it used to be six years, it's now two years, okay? Wow. So here's a prime example of we're just not there yet in terms of accuracy when it comes to those systems. Samye says these inaccuracies are sometimes referred to as hallucinations, and those can have a chilling effect. It obviously can put the, the integrity of the entire system in jeopardy uh, if all of a sudden we start introducing information that's simply inaccurate uh, into things that become precedent, that become reference, that become local authority. So ChatGPT can be flat out wrong, and that has to do with how it works. ChatGPT is one of many AI tools anyone can access online through a public terminal. It's a language model, meaning it's just looking for the next best word in a sequence, based on what you've asked it to do. And experts say that can give lawyers a false sense of security. Ever since the beginning of time, language has only emanated from other people. And so we give it a sense of trust that perhaps we shouldn't, right? We anthropomorphize these types of systems where we impart human qualities to them and we think that they are being um, more human than they actually are. That's exactly what happened in a courtroom last year in New York. Two lawyers submitted a legal brief that included six fictitious case citations, which were completely made up by ChatGPT. That case was concerning to Sanjay Khanna at Cox & Palmer. Lawyers at that firm are not using AI, yet. They're worried about putting private or privileged information into an open source system that anyone can access. It's one of those situations where you don't want to put the cart before the horse. And uh, in my experiences, a lot of organizations start to get excited and follow those flashing lights and implement tools without, per without properly vetting them out in the sense of how the data can be used, where the data is being stored, is it in-house, on-premise, on within servers internally, or is it cloud-based, which, uh, again, uh, where is that data being housed? So some lawyers are using AI and others aren't. But should they be using it? When asked that question, Katie Selegi didn't mince words. Oh, absolutely not. Not right now, that's for sure. Um, I don't think that anybody should be using generative AI to do anything other than, you know, party tricks. I think there are a couple of problems. One is that I think it is a problem for human dignity. So if we have an idea of having humanity as a value, at the center of our judicial system, that that can be eroded if we outsource too much of the decision-making power to non-human entities. Um, I think that it might be problematic for the rule of law as an organizing force for our society if we, um, if we don't have confidence and if we don't believe right, that the law is working for us more or less most of the time, and that we have the capability to participate it and change it, it, it risks converting the rule of law into a rule by law. There's something a little bit authoritative or authoritarian about what law might look like in a world that is controlled by, um, by robots and machines. Right now, AI in law is a wild west. Courts across the country have issued notices and guidelines about it, but there's no real regulation on how the technology should be used. The Nova Scotia Barrister Society is revamping its set of law office standards to include AI and has created a guide. But for now, it's up to lawyers to decide whether a computer can help them uphold the law. Allie Thompson, CBC News, Supreme Court in Halifax.